Father, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to worship to you tonight. We thank you for your word that goes forth, Father. Thank you that for your word is true. Father, I pray uh, just to open hearts, including myself, to hear what you have to say tonight, Lord. We boldly come into your throne room of grace in Jesus' name. And we take dominion and authority right now over Satan and all his workers in Jesus' name. We bind you up. All distractions bound up in Jesus' name. We lose your peace in here, God. We lose your will here. And Father, I thank you it's your will that no man should perish, but all should have eternal life with you. Yes, God. And so, Father, if there's anyone here tonight that doesn't know you, Lord, <clears throat> I pray, God, with your grace, you'd call them back to yourself. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Don't normally pray quite that way, so that might be for somebody here, probably. That was by the Spirit. Amen. Uh, before I start with the message, I've seen the paper back there, and you know, one of the things it says is that Palestine is now recognized as a state. The United Nations had a vote, I believe it was yesterday, and so now Palestine is recognized as a non-member United Nations state by the United Nations, I think it was like 139 to 9 or something like that was the vote for Palestine being recognized. Praise the Lord, the United States was one of the nine votes against it. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, otherwise, it wouldn't have been good. But I say that in the spirit of things in uh, the spiritual realm are accelerating. Um, in times, things are happening. Yes. So it's, it's a time to stay close to the Lord, yes. to Amen. tell people about Jesus, um, not get into any kind of fear or panic, but it's actually, you know, when Jesus said, when he, we see these things happening, our redemption draws nigh. Draws Amen. nigh. So with that, tonight's message is called, what would, we've heard that, that saying of, what would Jesus do? So I'll kind of we'll take off on that. What would Jesus have us to do? What would Jesus have us to do? Ephesians uh, chapter 4, we'll start there. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 11 and 12. And he gave some, meaning Jesus, he is in, he himself, Jesus himself gave some apostles, mm -hmm. some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers mm -hmm. for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So, as a fellowship here, we're blessed. We've had all of the above come. Amen. All of the above Amen. came. Yeah. Yeah. And... The reason the Lord has me here tonight and the, the reason he brings in, he has David here and the reason, you know, Prophet Rob and other people come, Prophet Phil Rich, Prophet Rob Sanchez and, and others come is for the equipping of the saints, all of you folks, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So the building up of the body of Christ is the body that we already have, building up the body that we have, encouraging those that we have and growing in the grace and love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and also building up the body of Christ by telling the good news to people that don't know Christ, to add to the body of Christ. So everyone actually, if we're a saint, the set-apart ones, we're, in, we're all in the ministry. All of us are in the ministry. And so the Lord will strategically place people in you know, different jobs, and so there's, there's people that aren't necessarily a pastor or a prophet in the church setting that are a pastor and a prophet in their work setting. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll be, and they don't, they don't come in and nobody knows they're a pastor, yeah. nobody knows they're a prophet, nobody knows, especially an evangelist, people don't really, they don't go by that title in that position, mm -hmm. just as when we send missionaries to China, because China doesn't accept missionaries, they don't go and say they're a missionary. That's right. But they're on a mission for Jesus. And so it's still, we're equipping the saints for the work of the ministry as wherever the Lord positions us. So 
let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. <laughs> Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and of marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. What I really want to focus on there is that first part of that. The Word of God is living and powerful. Or some translations say the Word of God is living and active. So it's living and active. So what would Jesus have us to do? The first thing He would have us to do is believe His Word. Amen. Believe His Word. And, and take it as a personal message to us and as a living, active message to us. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. Verse 16. All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine or for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And as you know, the, the Bible is not gender specific. When it says man of God, it's talking about woman of God. You know, and sometimes it goes the other way. I, I'm the bride of Christ. So it's talking to men and women. It's not gender specific. That the man of God or the women of God, that the people of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that's in Ephesians. That's what it said. We're equipping the saints for the work of ministry. So somebody say, I'm getting equipped. I'm getting equipped. For the work of ministry. For the work of ministry. <laughs> Romans chapter 10, verse 9. A lot of you would be familiar with this. Romans what? Romans 10, 9. There's probably a lot of you that are here that have used this verse to lead someone to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Maybe been led yourself to Jesus with this verse. Mm -hmm. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many believe that? Amen. 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 How many of you all that have either used that? Is there anybody anybody that's used that verse to lead anybody to Jesus? Amen. Did you use that? Amen. Yeah. And when when you've used that verse to lead someone to Jesus, did the person that you led to Jesus, did they have to participate yes. in that? Yes. 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 They had to actually, for that verse to work and be living and active, they had to believe that verse themselves. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. And there's been other people, I mean, me personally, probably some of you, that have given that news to people, and some people don't receive it. No. Some people say, nah, I don't, I don't know, I don't believe that, or whatever, and, and that's okay. Because we still, all we really are doing, we're delivering the mail. Amen. We're the messenger. Amen. See, not everybody even believed Jesus. Not everybody received Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Jesus said in the Bible, it says, He who receives you receives me. Amen. He who receives, he who rece he who receives the one I send. And so sometimes the way to pray is, Lord, who are you sending me to? Mm -hmm. Who are you sending me to? And when are you sending me? Okay. Yes. And then we need to know that we have actually, when we're sent, that we have the right message. Amen. Because sometimes